Hi guys and welcome to another video. Counting calories seems like a lot of effort and you want an easier option, right? Well, today I'm going to give you some tips and tricks so you can still lose fat without counting a single macro or calorie. Counting every calorie from the food and drink that you consume can be annoying, irritating and a complete headache. Some people find it easy to track their calories, while others find it an added stress. Some people only track half of what they're eating. Luckily, you can still lose fat and not count a single calorie. Wait, in the past you said you have to count calories to lose weight. I did, didn't I? This is still true. Counting calories is the easiest way to lose weight or to lose fat. It is the best way to create new habits. While creating new habits, you also learn the calories that are in the foods that you are consuming. For a large percentage of people though, this can be a hard task. And I want to be able to give you a way that you can still lose weight without having to count calories and without having a massive headache from doing it. Now that I've got your attention, make sure to give this video a like. If you're new around here, hit that subscribe button and ding that bell so you get notified of my future videos. Back to the main video. To lose weight, you must be in an energy deficit, a calorie deficit. And these 10 tips and tricks will help you do that. So let's get on and begin with tip number one. Fasting, also known as skipping breakfast. If your lifestyle and routine allows it, then skip breakfast. Don't have your first meal of the day till midday or even later. First couple of days of avoiding breakfast can be the hardest, especially if you're used to having breakfast. But once you're used to it, it becomes a lot easier. If you are like me, you can eat two or three meals before 12 o'clock. So by cutting those out or by removing them, you are reducing your calories greatly just by skipping breakfast or skipping your morning routine. A lot of people will say that skipping breakfast will slow down your metabolism. It's not true. A lot of people will say that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Well, it isn't. Give it a go and see how you get on. Tip two, get your bloody ass moving. Just move more, set a step target, go for a bloody walk. If you work from home, then walk around the house. On your lunch break, go for a quick walk around the block. You don't need the gym. You don't need fancy equipment. You don't need to go for a run. Walking is a very good way of burning calories. Every single person has legs, so bloody use them. Walking 10,000 steps burns roughly 500 calories. Depending on how fast you walk and how big your stride is, 10,000 steps normally takes about an hour and a half. 90 minutes might seem like a long time, but let's just say on your hour dinner break, you go for a 30 minute walk. Then you've only got an hour to make up. Walking around the house for the rest of the day probably equates to an hour. Straight away, that hour and a half is gone you've hit your 10,000 steps. So actually it isn't that much of a hard task when you put your mind to the challenge. Give it a go and see how you get on. Tip number three, drink more water. Water is a natural hunger suppressant. Increasing your fluid intake to two or three liters per day can have great benefits. Drinking fluid with every single meal that you have can actually increase how full you feel. So you reduce your calories by doing it that way. Feeling of hunger that we get sometimes can actually be a sign of dehydration. So by having a drink instead of eating, you may find that actually you're dehydrated rather than being hungry. Again, reducing your calories from doing that. Also tip number three links with tip number two. Because you're drinking more fluid, you'll be going to the toilet a lot more. Again, increasing your step count. Inside bad, outside good. Inside bad, outside good. <sighs> tip number four. Plan your plate. Change the way you build your meals. This is the easiest habit to get into for weight loss. Split your plate into three sections. So you have carbohydrates, protein, and fibrous carbohydrates, your vegetables. That is the perfect plate set up for weight loss. What we see on the other hand though, is the complete opposite. We see a plate piled high of carbohydrates, a few vegetables dotted in, and maybe a slight chunk or a little chunk of protein. That isn't great at all. Carbohydrates are not bad and they are needed in your diet, they are needed in your lifestyle. The problem though with carbohydrates is they are very, very satisfying. But the problem is with them, they're not satiating. So you can eat a lot of them, get full, and then within an hour, you can eat a lot more again. This is very bad for weight loss. So by reducing the volume of carbohydrates and increasing your fibrous carbohydrates and your protein, you're still able to have a very large meal. It's very satiating, and you're not gonna be starving after a couple of hours. So you're gonna be fuller for longer. Tip number five, try and improve your sleep. It is recommended that you should have between seven and nine hours of sleep per night. A lack of sleep has been found to trigger an increased amount of ghrelin. This is your hunger hormone, and this leads to an increase of hunger and an increase in appetite. That makes overeating very easy. Also, if you can get more sleep, you have less of a window to be able to eat. So you're gonna reduce your calories. You're gonna reduce your hunger, and you're just gonna generally feel better. Ways that you can improve your sleep are quite simple. So the first one is increase or improve your sleep hygiene. 
So what do I mean by that? So you want to make the environment that you're sleeping in a lot more friendly. So you want to make it darker. You want to make the temperature just right for you. You want to make your bed comfortable. You want to turn off all electronics before you go to bed. So you have very few distractions. Then what you want to try and do is go to bed a little bit earlier so you can relax. So you can feel more comfortable in bed to help you go to sleep. If you fail to go to sleep, there is also one thing you can do. You can always watch these videos. Tip number six, fruit and vegetables. So what you want to do is increase your intake of fruit and vegetables. I've already touched on vegetables in the previous tips. So let's talk about fruit. Snack on fruit where you can. Fruit can help with weight loss. Uh, too much sugar, I don't think so. Again, when idiots talk about sugar, they don't really know what they're talking about. All carbohydrates get turned into glucose into some form of ratio within the body. Fruit gets turned into fructose and glucose. So saying, oh, but it contains sugar, basically means you don't know what you're talking about and you haven't got a clue about nutrition. So just ignore them. Fruit contains fructose, a carbohydrate. It also contains fiber. It has a lot of micronutrients and phytonutrients in it. Talking about fiber in fruit, we'll go into this a little bit later on. All of that paired together means that fruit is very good for weight loss. They are low in calories and they are fairly satiating and they contain vitamins and minerals. Ever seen an obese person eating a lot of fruit and gaining weight? No, didn't think so. Tip number seven, increase your protein intake. I say this all the time and I'll keep saying it until I'm blue in the face. You need to eat protein with every meal. If you normally have cereal for breakfast, have cereal but then add in a protein shake if you have a sandwich for your lunch load that bad boy up with protein protein helps to keep you fuller for longer it helps maintain lean body mass which helps with weight loss and by eating more protein you're actually burning extra calories through the thermic effect of food so as i keep saying eat your bloody protein tip number eight fiber the steroid for your poo yep i'm claiming that one fiber makes fecal matter bigger and bulkier but how does fiber help with weight loss well, fiber keeps you fuller for longer. Again, it's very satiating. Also keeps you regular and keeps your bowels healthy. A lot of the population and a lot of the global population have a very low fiber intake. I believe the recommended amount of fiber you should have is around about 20 to 25 grams per day. But most people are only having five to 10 grams. So one way to increase your fiber is eat more vegetables and eat more fruit. Tip number nine, change your snacks. All the time you hear when you're trying to lose weight is the easiest thing people say is stop snacking. Stopping snacking though isn't really an answer. We need to snack to an extent to curb hunger. But the problem is normally when you're hungry, you go for the easiest option possible. You'll go to the biscuit tin, you'll go to the chocolate for cupboard. That's just how you go for it because it's easy, it's convenient. And also it's very satisfying. So when you're trying to lose weight, one of the easiest thing you can do to stop snacking or to reduce the amount you're snacking is go for foods that are low calorie. So to reduce snacking, you need to A, have more satiating meals at meal times, and then B, when you do want to snack or when you need to curb that hunger, you go for low calorie snacks, fruit, vegetables, popcorn, etc., rather than going for the more satiating and highly satisfying foods like biscuits and chocolate. Tip number 10, lastly, eat the foods that you enjoy. Being overly restrictive when you're trying to lose weight can be a bad thing because you're more likely to binge the highly satisfying foods or the foods that you really want and the foods that you're constantly thinking about. Instead, eat them in moderation. If you want that cake, just have a little bit. If you want to have pizza, have one slice and then build up the rest of your meal as we did in tip four. If you follow each one of these tips and tricks, you'll be able to lose weight without having to count a single calorie or macro. Give it a go and let me know how you find it. I hope to see you all for the next video. Until next time, farewell.